Heather, good morning. Jason, good morning to you. Why are you laughing? <laughs> the faces you were making. Sorry, I I had a cord that kept hitting the top of my hand because I, I plugged in a different headphone, but the original headphone jack is running through my arm from my mic. Uh, and so it's kept hitting my hand. I was like, what is that? And so, so I was watching the countdown to try to get some room noise that I could edit out later if I needed to. Uh, I, it was touching my hand and like, what is going on? So yeah. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Good morning. And, and how, uh, how are you? <laughs> I, I am fine. Fantastic. I'm fine. This is later than I've ever recorded a podcast before in the history of my life. Really? Yeah. I usually do these early in the day. And so, uh, viewer, listener, however you consume this, uh, we are recording Saturday afternoon. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's two 30, my time it's four 30 middle earth time. Right. Correct. Uh, so yeah, so I'm a little like, I feel like I should have been doing more or less today, but you can't on... quite decide which. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I could start a project, but it's just not worth it. I so... have something coming up in nine hours, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah. I've got, uh, <laughs> I got, I got, I got some laundry. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, the party has gathered, uh, and, uh, we've got our burglars. We've got our, uh, our dwarves. We've got our hobbits. We've got our Gandalf wizard person and you and me, Heather, we're here to talk about chapter two. That's right. And, uh, listener, if you have questions or comments as we read through this, please send them to hobbitforming at gmail.com. Or, you know, you can leave a comment or a review on iTunes or Spotify um, or or uh, watch our Instagram, Hobbit Forming Pod um, on Instagram, and uh, th- we'll throw some question forms up throughout the week yeah. uh, so you can add your questions there, too. So uh, right now, I mean, we're just getting this thing started. I don't have any questions from any listeners. So, Heather, um, would you... Give us a synopsis of chapter two as a first time reader. What happened in chapter two? Yeah. So in chapter two, Bilbo wakes up, uh, recap of real quick chapter one, like all of the dwarves were at his house and spending the night and they were about to leave like for, or they were like, we're going to leave tomorrow morning for our thing. And uh, Bilbo wakes up in chapter two to a clean, empty house. um, And he is like, all right, maybe this was all just a bad dream. Um, and then eventually Gandalf shows Gandalf shows up and is like, bro, why are you still here? Uh, all your all your friends have left. All the dwarves have left. You haven't even like dusted, or you would have seen that they left you a note, which I didn't like. I don't dust first thing when I wake up, so I'm not sure why. Like, is that a, a Hobbit thing or just a Bilbo Baggins thing? Or I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. you're just in synopsis mode right now, not so much analyzing mode. Sorry, so. maybe, <laughs> maybe. All right. Uh, but so, but he was like, they're all going to be leaving in like a minute. You're supposed to be meeting them at this 11 or something like that. And uh, so he left without any of his usual traveling accoutrement, uh, including wow, his pocket word. hanky. Like that was a big deal. Um, and uh, then like he meets up with the dwarves and they start off on their thing. And all of a sudden, like, they're like, Hey, where'd Gandalf go? <laughs> like, he's just gone. Um, uh, they like set up a camp, a pony gets scared, lose all their supplies. And they're all pretty upset and pretty like, down about that and then they see a light off in the distance and they're like hey we got a burglar with us so we should make the burglar go figure out what that is and so they do (laughs) like they all walk toward it together but then they're like all right bilbo you go do your thing and so bilbo goes and he sees that it's three trolls around a fire eating mutton um and the the three trolls have the most there we go <laughs> the three trolls have the most human names um right what it's like bill tom and 
something else. I wrote it down. I can't remember it. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, and so then he gets caught because he's trying to like steal from one of the trolls. He's and trying to burgle. Yeah, he is trying to burgle from one of the trolls. And then he gets caught and they're like, ooh, we'll we'll eat you up. And he's like, um, I, I cook better than I cook. So like, let me cook you breakfast. And I thought that was just a funny line. Anyway, um, they all get in a fight, a little like a little fight. All the dwarves come up, all the dwarves get captured. Then Gandalf shows up and starts, you know, doing the classic, oh, I'm going to throw my voice and make you all think that it's your friend's voice and gets them all riled up and against each other. Um, the dwarves get freed. The trolls, because they can't get underground before light comes, end up go- turning into stone. And before that happened, Gand- or Bilbo finds like a key out of William, somebody's pocket. Right. Um, but he doesn't mention anything about it until they find the trolls hideout and they can't open it and everybody's doing their best to try to open it. And then Bilbo is like, Oh, look at this. I got a key. And they were all like, well, why didn't you mention that before? Is it? I thought it's so so. close. Yeah. It's so great. (laughs) I mean, it does. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was pretty good. Thank you. Um, and then they go into the, the troll or the, yeah, the trolls hideout. They come out with like, food and clothes and weapons specifically some swords and knives um that have runes on it and say that it's like it wasn't made by trolls i believe Mm -hmm. um they buried these other items put spells on it uh and then i can't remember which dwarf asked him like where did you go um where did you go yeah, where did Gandalf go? And he's like, I went to go look ahead. And they asked, what brought you back? And he said, looking behind. And I was just like, ooh, like that was that was a cool line. Um, and then at, in the next chapter, they'll get to Rivendell. Like that's basically kind of how it ends. Is that Perfect. a good? Yeah, good synopsis. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so the, the dwarf that asked Gandalf is Thorin. Thorin. He's like the main dwarf. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. he's the leader. The head so dwarf. he's going to be the one who gets probably the most stage time in the book. Okay. So, you know, I mean, he there's 13 dwarves, and we really don't get to know most of them really well. Yeah. You know, we really are focusing on uh, Thorin and Balin. We'll get to know Balin a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, good uh, good synopsis, Heather. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. The it was William who had the key. Okay. Th- not that there's a quiz. I, I'm not <laughs> quizzing you. I just I want to hear how a first time reader reads this book because it's been a long time since I've been a first time reader. When did you first read this book? Do you even um, remember? I was probably in like sixth grade. Seriously. Yeah, I think I read all of them in sixth and seventh grade because i remember uh we had just gotten jeff moore in the distance evolution album (laughs) and i was listening to that quite a lot while i was reading this book so uh it was such a wow so it was a long time ago really quick i remember calling in to kcms Mm -hmm. the the christian music station in in the seattle area asking them to play evolution by right. Jeff Moore in the distance. Right. This is one was... of their biggest singles of yes. all time. Yes. And the, the chorus is, I believe in evolution, changing of the heart, renewing of the mind. It's right. the only possible solution. It's evolution redefined. Yep. But because it says anything like I believe in evolution, uh, KCMS was like, we can't play that. Also, it's not, you know, one of their five songs that they play on repeat anyway. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. I was... That that's probably when I first became disillusioned with Christian media. Yeah, 
<laughs> you're a Christian radio station refusing to play a Christian song. A Christian song? What the heck? Is that when you forayed into Smashing Pumpkins? Because I feel like it was pretty soon after that that uh, you. It wasn't until Kevin Swan gave me his tapes when he upgraded to CDs. Yeah, and then you so. gave me your tapes when you upgraded to CDs. So yeah, yeah. That's how <laughs> anyway. Listener, that's how old we are. If you're a young person, a tape cassettes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a whole thing. So, um. Yeah. So Heather, as you are, I mean, this is a short chapter and you read Mm -hmm. it as you were telling before we jumped on the recording, you read it on an airplane. I did. Um, So not, not usually the best place for reading I have found or taking copious notes. Um, But it seems like you have some notes, some questions, some thoughts. Let's talk about it. I I do have my notes. Um, The thing. Okay. One of the things, uh, one of the things that stuck out to me um, was when Bilbo was like, like they were very much early on in this little like meetup and getting out of town. Uh, but he just was like, I wish I was at home uh, in front. Of, like, I wish I was at home in my hole with like a book and cozy and all of that. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, I might be a Baggins <laughs> like, yeah. as I'm on a plane to go to a work trip where there are lots of people. And I was just like, mm. I wish I was at home in my hole. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It is It is fall and it is time to be home in a cozy hole yes. of your own making, yes. eating soups and stews and different things. It is uh, finally like soup season here in, in Middle Earth or Tulsa. It is currently 46 degrees and... We just sat for hours at our kids' soccer games. So I'm very much wishing I had soup. Um, the other, just some other things that I think are really interesting that Tolkien like put in here was talking about the trolls and how like their language was not suitable for, I think he said like parlor language or something mm-hmm. like that. Um you know, had, had bad mouths and they were eating and complaining about the, the mutton that they, that they had for ever. Right. <laughs> um, but also like, why do they have such normal names when like the dwarves are Killy and Philly or whatever and Ball and Wallen, but like these trolls are William and Tom and Gus or Bert. something. Bert. Bert. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Gus. Really close. <laughs> yeah. Very common name, uh, Bert. Uh, well, yeah, I, I don't know why they have the most common names in the whole series. Yeah. Like and, everybody else's names. Is it is it because like trolls are supposed to be like the most human and humans are dumb or? No, <laughs> like, there what are is humans. The, there are actual humans in this book too? Yes. Yeah. And we'll get to it. Oh my lord! Okay, so, <laughs> what yeah, are their are, names? <laughs> uh, there they, some of them have Jane not weird names, but most of them are like Aragorn and uh, Boromir and Faramir, Denethor. <sighs> These are some of the human names. Uh, okay, so um, I thought. Why did I think that is Aragorn? It doesn't matter. Whatever. It's fine. Aragorn is Strider. Aragorn is Vigo Mortensen. Vigo Mortensen. I didn't know that was a human. I thought that was an elf. No, no. So the... I'm getting way ahead. (laughs) You're getting way ahead. Um, But I do do think it is interesting, though, that these are three very common names, and they don't sound made up. No. No. Which everybody else's names totally sound made up. It I sounds don't know like why. he pulled ne- ne- like letters out of a Scrabble bag. I was like, that works. Let's, right. Let's so, consult Doctor Seuss to find a rhyme. <laughs> like, exactly, and I don't know why. I don't know why, but it is very strange. Um. So yeah, it's a good note. As I was reading, I was like, oh, I forgot that they had names. <laughs> yeah. Because also, their names don't matter. Like it's they, one of those details in this book. That like they're it doesn't matter what they're called because they're never going to come back. They're turned to stone because they are turned to stone. And that oh right, spoilers, y'all. Uh, they they turn to stone. And if a troll sees or like is in the sunlight, they never 
they yeah. never come back. How, there was there a way for them to come back, no. or was that it? That's it. They're done. Okay. They wow. are done. <laughs> so wow. uh, they get a whole chapter basically about these trolls um, that uh, yeah they're never going to come back. So um, and the the note about their improper language. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you, you know, it's like parlor language is like, how would we sit at, at like after a formal dinner and, and in fellowship with one another and talking to people, you know, it's like, we just want to like put on a good presence and good airs among, uh, among society types. Right. Oh, okay. So you're not talking about like, how would Dumans sit after no. a meal no. and talk with no. each other? <laughs> no. So that's what he's saying. Like, these are the basest of base. Okay. Like trolls are dumb. Yeah. And so like, that is like basically Tolkien's way of saying like, you don't want to hang out with trolls. They're stupid. They're dumb. They're annoying. Uh, and they're crude, offensive, whatever you want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, they're not cool at all. Got it. Got it. Will so, there be more trolls later on? There are these three trolls it? around. But, but we don't like get really, to know them. No. They're okay. not really uh because there's there's in the monster universe here, <laughs> we're gonna deal with uh these trolls, orcs, and goblins. Okay. And and they're different but not too different. So okay. <laughs> they're all bad. All right. So Sounds good. If Sounds you meet good. a goblin in Lord of the Rings, not a good thing. It's a, it's a corrupted, it's a corruption of the, um, the divine design of the uh, Lord of the Rings universe. So, because there is a creation right. narrative, there's a creation stat. It, is like this the, all it, in the Similarian or... Silmarillion. Silmarillion. Uh, <laughs> I'll get it one day. I still have to slow down every time I keep come across that word. Like, okay, how do I say this? Yeah. Um, so, yes, that's all explained in the Silmarillion. Uh, like that the elves were the first creation of the divine, and uh, and then orcs were dwarves were kind of a like offshoot creation by one of the other like high beings, and then. Orcs are a corruption of elves, basically. It's a whole thing. Uh, so, and so <laughs> goblins and trolls then are in that same line of corruption of creation from the the good created order of of the divine. So okay. yeah. <laughs> it's just I if you're just listening to this, if you're not watching the video, Jason's face as he's explaining this, like you can see his his brain working like should i get nerdier about this <laughs> or <true>. or not <laughs> that is that's just it's killing me it is making me laugh so hard and yeah well yeah. <laughs> in my other podcast that i do regularly called parks and conversation mm-hmm. um there's a character named ben wyatt oh yeah and there's a moment where B- ben is talking to somebody and they make some kind of statement about <laughs> Uh, Game of Thrones, I believe. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't have time to get into this with you. And then he's like, actually, I can't. I have to make it. Yeah. <laughs> like that's that's how I feel most of the time. If somebody's talking about The Hobbit or comic books, it's, it's, they say something wrong. It's like, I just don't get into it. It's like, no, I have to. My, I have my to. Brain... I won't be able to sleep tonight. And if something happens to either one of us, like I've got to make sure that this has been said kind of thing. I need- I need people to I know need closure. <laughs> that they're dumb. Uh, they're so, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So those are good questions, Heather. <laughs> yeah. Some other Thanks. thoughts. In Thanks. <laughs> um, okay. So I wrote down like in my notes, you know, after all of the dwarves get nabbed, except for Thorin, and Bilbo, because Bilbo like escaped from whichever troll had him, William, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wrote it back. Then Gandalf came back. 
the fork, Gandalf. <laughs> like, where was he? Why does he just now like come back? So obviously I didn't read ahead and see that, you know, he said I was looking ahead and then looked behind and saw that I needed to come back. But like, I think you mentioned last week or maybe I saw this somewhere like he isn't always by their side like he's frequently like going to kind of be going off yeah right yeah yeah i did mention that i did i did give you warning that gandalf is a comer and goer he <laughs> doesn't stay anywhere uh he um yeah he goes when he where he believes he needs to be so uh, why did he okay he believed he needed to look ahead to kind of just see like what was coming their way and to like prep them or well, was he like, no, y'all got this. <laughs> I think he was trying to just look ahead to see what the situation was in Rivendell. Mm -hmm. Cause he ran into some of Elrond's people. We learned mm -hmm. that in chapter two um, and let to let them know that he's going to bring dwarves to Rivendell. Because elves don't like dwarves. It goes both ways. They don't like each other. Elves are not big fans of dwarves, and dwarves really don't like elves. But why? I think uh, I, I like... <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you know, Heather, <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed the world, but there's a lot of people who don't like other groups of people. And yeah. sometimes that just happens. And there's yes. not a good reason for it at all. However... In Lord of the Rings, there is a good reason, and it's in the Silmarillion. The Silmarillion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Am I going to have a copy of the Silmarillion like on my doorstep now? Because No, no, you're okay. not ready for that. You go, no. <laughs> and I'm not what? trying to, I'm not trying to say that in a belittling way. Uh -huh. not, okay. I don't need you to know you're dumb. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not ready uh, for that because that is a like one of those texts that. If you if you started with the Silmarillion, you would be more lost. Okay. Because like that, it is not, it is not a adventure story. You know, and so it's just, it's a it's a history text of a made up world, is really what the Silmarillion is about. Got it. And and so this like the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings are the adventure story that actually are with character development and things that you care about in the story. Um, the Silmarillion then is just like a bigger picture of the world. And it's more interesting after you've read these stories. Because then you can draw connections and be like, Oh, that's what happened there. Yeah. Or it's like, whatever. Oh, that's why the dwarves and the elves don't get along. And that's yeah. why like there's, there's going to be references to battles and wars and all kinds of things that happened in the past. And you'll be like, Oh, that's what he was talking about. And so then you read the Sil after you read Loader and The Hobbit like three or four times, then you read the Silmarillion and then and then you're like Wait, oh. three or four times? Did you say three or four times? I wouldn't Then nice, Yeah, I mean it's it's really good. <laughs> so oh my gosh. Okay. I will say as you noted, I read read this chapter and I did read ahead to chapter three. Um, so I, I do remember there is a little like tiny explanation of why dwarves and elves don't like each other, but I won't say anything about that yet. Um, but I did read this on a plane. I have, you know, the book copy, I have the audible copy and I had my notebook and I'm sitting there like pausing going back, listening to it again, making sure I'm like, oh, did that, what just happened? And like, list, like, and then as I was driving home from our soccer games this afternoon, I re-listened to chapter two. You are going to turn me into a nerd because I like, I am enjoying this and I hate myself for it. <laughs> but, Heather, yeah, there's no reason to hate yourself for <laughs> liking things. I know. I know. Maybe and, it's more that I just like, I hate that maybe I didn't read this before or that like, whatever. Yeah. It's fine. You know, Heather, here's the cool thing about uh, me. No, uh, here's the cool <laughs> thing about a healthy fandom. There's always room for more people. That's true. Right. And it doesn't yeah. matter how old you are when you get into the thing. Like if the, if the fandom is healthy, it's like, welcome. 
we love to have you here. Let's talk about this thing that we all like. Mm-hmm. And that's what loader is. Like it is, I, I have found it is one of the, when you start talking to loader people, some, they're some of the greatest people. And, you know, uh, another example, Heather, um, you know, I am a 42 year old white man. However, this summer I gave myself a project because I had no frame of reference mm-hmm. to listen to all of Taylor Swift's albums. Yes. And yes. Today, I remember talking about that. Did you go get 1989? Today I bought her best album. Yes. I have it too. Let me go it's get so it. It's so good. <laughs> and yes. so I don't, I don't own, I don't own any of her records. Um, I'd listen to them all on Spotify mm-hmm. and then, but I, when I listened to 1989, I was like, this is really good. Mm-hmm. This album is objectively perfect. Um, and so, yeah, so I listened to it today as yeah. I was getting ready for getting things set up here. It's a great album. It's now, so the thing, like, I think she's a great uh, singer, great songwriter, all those things. Um, I would not be afraid to tell anybody in a Taylor Swift fandom, like, hey, I really like this album. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be afraid of the 14 year old girls being like, you can't like Taylor Swift. You're too old. <laughs> uh, you know? And so like, I hope to never be like, have that attitude with anybody as they're getting into something like the Hobbit or comic right. books or star Wars. It's like, no, like, great. Why do you like it? Like what, yeah. what, what are you enjoying about it? Uh, and that's a much more fun conversation than to say, I can't believe you have never read this before. Right. Like there's so much stuff. There's so much stuff. Um, and so, yeah, so welcome to the party. And, uh, this, this truly is an unexpected party for me. Uh, here's the thing that I, what, what I am experiencing with you as you're reading this, mm-hmm. uh, as Gandalf sends Bilbo out, it's like, you better hurry up and get out there. Uh, there's this paragraph. And again, this is Bilbo writing his account of his life. At the start of the paragraph, it says, to the end of his days, Bilbo could never remember how he found himself outside. <laughs> I underline that because it's, it's one of those things that's like adventure just kind of sweeps you up. Yeah. And so when you said, like, when did you start reading this? I'm pretty sure it was sixth grade. Um, but Ken read it first, our older brother. Uh, and he had a copy and I just read it. Yeah. After he read it. Um. But it's one of those things where it's like, I don't really remember the first time I read it. I don't really remember like all the details that led to me reading it other than it was there. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of got, I just kind of got swept up in it. And I was like, yeah. this is so good. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, I think one of the cool things about the way, even this second chapter, like so far, Tolkien is doing something wonderful. He's not getting way into world building. Yeah. In this book, because I think that's one of the things that fantasy writers tend to uh, to use as a gatekeeping method to see who's really into the, what they're writing is they start building this world mm-hmm. and you don't know anything about anything. And uh, and so Tolkien doesn't try to do that in this book. He's just like, no, it's just it just happens. Yeah. Like the rest of our lives. Right. Like. Right. Like we don't really get to participate in the world building of the world we're in. It just happens around it us just, and it just happens. Yeah. And so it's just one of those things where it's like, yeah, I just, this is what I did. And I don't know why. <laughs> and I don't know, <laughs> I, I don't know what, what I'm doing here. And I don't know how to get out of it. And right. I forgot everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's how did I get here? <laughs> yeah. That's life. Um, and so, yeah, so I love that, uh, that, that, uh, Mine and it made me made me smile. Um, there's also as they're talking about their horses and ponies, mm-hmm. uh, the smaller Gandalf. one for Dildo. No, not for Bilbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're gonna get that explicit tag. Uh, oh no! <laughs> for Bilbo. Yeah, I mean it was bound to happen eventually, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh well okay. technically it's week three week three but, so <laughs> bilbo bill bilbo el senor baggins <laughs> yes that guy uh he uh so he's they've got the dwarves have ponies and um 
Bilbo has the smallest pony, and then Gandalf has a very splendid white horse. Yes. Now that white horse maybe shadow facts. Uh, what? Shadow facts. What is that? One, uh, a mythical horse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay 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 <laughs> so just something to note like this white horse is important uh this white horse will come back uh in lord of the rings and shadow gandalf facts will, shadow facts gandalf will whistle for it and it hears his call and it comes running to him as they're and he's like off on an adventure a, a side quest for gandalf it's so good anyway um yeah did you have other notes as you were thinking? i'm just pointing out uh, yeah rando stuff the one other thing that I wanted to ask about, um, again, and I do think we get into it a little bit in chapter three, was the swords and knives um, and like the importance of those things. Obviously, they they need weapons, weapons for, right. for their journey. Um, but then they also like buried a bunch of the items and put spells on them are dwarves also like because obviously Gandalf is a wizard and can do that so did the dwarves also do that what was the purpose of putting like burying everything instead of taking mm -hmm. things with them yeah um Tolkien never really gets into building a magic system <laughs> <laughs> so okay like magic happens and he doesn't really care about the rules. <laughs> so do dwar <laughs> are dwarves able to cast spells? Apparently. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Why not? Um, we There are times, and even in the when they were going over the map, there's a secret door that only opens uh, on Thorin's Day or whatever it is. Um, and like once a year, like the light will shine on it and you can see where the keyhole is. Right. That's in chapter one. <laughs> and so who made that door? Must have been the dwarves. Maybe some elves helped at one point. I don't know. Elves are elves have magic. Dwarves have some kind of magic. Hobbits. No magic. No magic. No magic. Normal people. Not really like humans. They're not very magical either. Um, but there is an enchantment to the world where. Mystical mysterious things happen so like curses and different things they, they mean something yeah and so yeah <laughs> so yeah th so apparently that maybe the dwarves put some kind of curse over the ground there to say like whoever digs this up will lose all of their their beard will fall out right Ooh. which would be the worst possible thing for a dwarf for a dwarf yeah um yeah. and so yeah so that maybe those kinds of things those kinds of words okay. and curses or something so yeah. Okay. But again, um, Tolkien doesn't try to explain magic at all in this world. Yeah. He's just like, magic is going to happen and you're going to have to deal with it. So quick question. It said like they buried it so that in case they had a chance to come back and get it. Do they have a chance to come back and get it? Well, They're there are more books. Further. Oh my so. gosh. Is this like they wouldn't come back and get that stuff until the very, very end? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, they're not really going to get into whether or not they're going to come get all this stuff in this book. I'm just saying, like, Bilbo lives. <laughs> like, there's more books. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> well, but I know, but, like, is he... Okay, never mind. It's fine. We'll get to it. We'll get <laughs> okay. to it. All right. All right. Is there anything else that I, like, missed or that other... Good Other call first time readers. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just uh, wanted to highlight, I underlined a word that I'd never read before and I thought it was fantastic. Well, I'd read it before, but it never resonated with me before because I've read mm -hmm. this book. I got cred. Uh, but uh, the word burglarious. Yes. I noticed, I read, <laughs> like, mentioned, or, or I thought of that as I was listening to it today. Uh, burglarious. What does that yeah. mean? <laughs> Of the various burglarious proceedings yeah. he had heard of picking the troll's pockets seemed the least difficult. So at least he so at last he crept behind a tree just behind William. So of the various burglarious 
<laughs> and that's one of those things where I think Tolkien wrote that and it was like, that's fun. Yeah. That's just a little, <laughs> little, little extra something there for y'all. That's a little fun thing just to write down. So, um, yeah, so he, yeah, we just, he's like, this is something that burglars should do is steal things. Yeah. <laughs> so, also, but he said something like William had like a purse in his pocket that was as big as a bag to bill though. Yes. But like, so like how big was it? And by purse, cause I mean, I can carry a pretty big purse, but they're talking about like, like a purse that had like monies in it. Yeah. Or... So think about like a coin purse. Okay. For you. Mm-hmm. But a troll is like. It would have to be like. Bigger oh. than you. <laughs> right. And a troll is even more big compared to Bilbo, <laughs> who is a hobbit. Yes. And so, uh, yeah. So it's a like probably like a duffel bag. Okay. And like that's a weekender. To... <laughs> yes. A weekender bag for, you know, just a, like a, a, a nice carry on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, you know, so that's one of those things where he is like, it's a key to us that he's not a very good burglar because he's like, I'm going to take this giant thing giant out thing. of the giant thing's pocket. Yeah. So he's not good at his job. No. Uh, Which is why I'm like, why is he called a burglar? Because he, like. Because Gandalf just said so. <sighs> Hobbits are have a way of sneaking about. Okay. That like is important. They can be sneaky. They hide. And we are we read in their introduction. Like they hide when the big people come around. Yeah. Right. And I, so that's an I important did, note. I did read something that a hobbit, like you're it should kind of like remind you of like a rabbit. Like sure. and the like hob the, there's a word hob and rabbit, and they like took the thought is that Tolkien like took those two words and kind of put them together to create this like creature that's in its hidey hole and, you know, only comes out when absolutely necessary, but will run back Mm -hmm. to, is is that right? Is that good? Yeah, that that sounds good. Good assessment. (laughs) Sounds good to me. Perfect. Um, So yeah. Uh, Another note uh, is when he's talking about the trolls after they turn into stone uh, Tolkien writes, uh, and there they stand to this day all alone, unless the birds perch on them. For trolls, as you probably know, yeah, probably duh. know, must be <laughs> underground before dawn, or they go back to the stuff of the mountains they are made of and never move again. That is what happened to Bert, Tom, and William. To go back to the mountains, the stuff of the mountains they are made of. Mm-hmm. And so these are creatures that are formed from the earth somehow. Mm-hmm. And so Tolkien being a, uh, a, a lover of myth and also a, a person of faith, uh, he's trying to bring in these creation narratives from all these different, you know, like mythology systems. Yeah. Um, and, and so he's saying the trolls, they're not formed from the clay, not like the Bible would say about humans, uh, they're formed from rocks and mountains. Rocks. Yeah. The things and so that's yeah. why they turn back to rocks. Okay. And that's why they're dumb. <laughs> dumb as a box of rocks. Yep. Is that a thing? <laughs> dumb as a rock. I don't know. <laughs> box uh, of dumb rocks. as a bag of hammers is a thing. So yeah, yeah. That's, what's a hammer except a rock on a stick? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I do think it's interesting. Like he just throws the way he writes it is like trolls, as you probably know, <laughs> like those kinds of things are just like, uh, there's a lot of assumptions from the narrator yeah, about the world. And that's one of the things I love about the way uh, about this book in particular is that it's just not going to worry about what you don't know. Right. Like just, everybody knows this stuff. <laughs> Doy. <laughs> this is, not everybody, man. Come on. This is straight up common knowledge, y'all. Do you think that Taylor Swift is a fan of The Hobbit? I have no idea, and I have no idea how to ask her that. I know. And I know this. I should not be the one to ask her that. You probably shouldn't. (laughs) I shan't. I I shan't. (laughs) shan't. I'll see. I'll see what I can do. She and I were like, we're super tight. Sure. Sure. I know she replies to people on Instagram, but I know I'm not the person to write to her. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want Travis to come and beat me up. I know. My goodness. (laughs) Although, like, I don't know if you noticed, I saw a picture of Travis Kelsey at the World Series, and he was holding a... He was holding a plate 
And I was like, Travis Kelsey has small hands. Like it, like at he's the world a big series. He was at the yes. world series last night. At yes. Game one. Oh, yes. Wow. I'll, I mean, I'll find it and send it to you, but I don't really care. You should, because it was, <laughs> I was like, why are your hands so small? You're a gigantic human and your hands are tiny. Um, again, you're right. It really doesn't care or it doesn't matter, but in a very real sense, it does. Um, All right. <laughs> so anyway, we are definitely veering, veering um, off the rails now. Yeah. So we should probably stop. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we veer further. Uh, but the sword that uh, Bilbo gets and the sword that Thorin gets are in, are particularly important swords. Okay. In the larger world of Lord of the Rings. Okay. Uh, so. The Bilbo's sword he names Sting, and um, yeah, and then Thorin it, he has this sword that's made. It we'll find out it's made by elves, and so for a dwarf to use an elvish sword is something uh, particular. The note just that it's like he recognizes how good this, how good of a weapon this really is, that he's okay. willing to use something from the elves. The elves they're the worst Ugh. so they're pointy yeah. Anyway. ears yeah and they're highfalutin ways so much falutin <laughs> so. i hate that i hate when people are highfalutin like that i, I want to hang out with low falutin yeah. people maybe like mid mid falutin <laughs> is what i'll as- aspire to but that highfalutin i can't can't do it i will not abide i'm writing um, down a show title <laughs> Trolls are mid. Mid falutin. <laughs> oh, well, dear listener, slash watcher, slash whatever. Um, Lurker. Lurkers. Really hope you are enjoying this as well. Uh, I've had a lot of friends reach out to me that they've like bought the books. They're they're following along as well. And that makes me really happy to not be on my own on this this journey. Very good. Um, yeah, but really, really appreciate it. Also, like Jason said at the beginning of the of the episode, if you have any questions, send them our way. Um, you know, Hobbit forming at gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. Hobbit, Hobbit forming, forming pod, pod on, on Instagram. Instagram. Oh my gosh, Jinx. and threads. Oh yeah, we, we also have a threads, threads account because Oof. it comes with Instagram now. Yeah, yeah, so. it's just a thing. <laughs> so I enjoy threads personally, uh, cause as somebody who really liked Twitter before yeah. it became hell, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's awful. I deleted my Twitter account Me and I was too. sad. I was like, this is a sad thing that this is just a terrible platform. So Me too. yeah. So threads has been great. Uh, yeah. anyway, yeah. Send us your questions, review, comment, share this with people. If you want to tr- trick some people into coming into an adventure where like, I don't even know how I got onto this. <laughs> Tell them about this podcast and send them the books. And they'll yes. be like Bilbo as well. Bilbo, not Bilbo knowing how he got outside. Baggins. <laughs> yeah. Like, what am I doing out here? So yeah. I'd rather be inside. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah. So with all that, we should uh, wrap it up here. And so Heather, good morning. Jason, good morning. Good morning.